In order to show all the user orders on this user profile page, I'll of course go to the user profile view here and we need to make some changes here. The first thing is I'm going to change the width of my column here a little bit and thereafter I want to create a bootstrap panel here. What is a bootstrap panel? Let's head up a look at bootstrap components here and then here we got the panels. I want to create a panel with a footer, this one here, because in the content I want to list all the items of an order and in the footer I want to list the total price. So I'm just copying that code. Remember I do use Bootstrap already so I can just copy the code here like that. I also want to add a horizontal line here and then let's say a heading where I say your orders, something like that. or my orders since it is my profile page. Then I have this panel and again in the panel content I want to list the items of each order. Back to the bootstrap page I'll use the list group class here for that. And I can use the very basic list group here with the unordered list. So I'm replacing panel content with that unordered list. Get rid of all list items but one. And then of course I need a couple of for each loops here. Now currently I'm not passing anything to that profile page. If we have a look at the user controller here in the get profile method, well I'm not passing any data to the user profile page but I want to pass my user orders of course. So let's work on that. In order to get my orders I'll create a new variable here and I'll take the currently logged in user which I know is available on the profile page because it is protected with the auth middleware. So I'm using my logged in user and I fetch all the orders on that user without parentheses. So I'm accessing this like a property because I'm already querying the user here on the database. And then I want to don't want to build a continued query. Instead, I just want to take the user I already fetched and then fetch the orders of that user. So here I got my orders. And now the next step is I'll use a built in method Laravel offers me on collections. Collections are a Laravel object type kind of and for example all the data we fetch through eloquent, eloquent again is how we can access the database, the, o, the ORM Laravel ships with, so orders here is a collection and then we can use the transform method on orders. Now what does the transform method do? The transform method allows me to kind of edit each order in this orders collection. Why do I need to do that? Well, remember we have that serialized card in the orders. So each order has this serialized card. I want to unserialize that card, but I need to do this for each order. Now, of course, I could also create some loops and loop through all of them, but with the transform method here, it's really easy. The transform method takes an anonymous function where I have an item. This will be the individual order. I could also name this order to make it clearer. And then the key, which will just be zero, one, two, and so on. In here, I want to take my individual order and access the card field, which I know each order has because I'm saving it like this in the database. So I'm overwriting the card field and what want to well what do I want to enter as a new value well I want to enter the unserialized value of the existing card field value so the existing card field or the card field currently at the beginning holds this long string which is the serialized version of the PHP object with the unserialized method I'm turning this into an object again and then just, well, I'm, I'm overwriting the string to no longer be a string, but now be the, the PHP object again, because I'm in PHP code here again. I don't need to work with a string anymore. And I'm doing that for all the orders in the, well, orders collection with the transform method here. So with that, I make sure that the card field actually holds the PHP object and no string, the string anymore. I also need to return the order inside here to well let the transform method know how the new order should look like. So here I'm changing it and here I'm just returning it. 
With that, I can pass my orders to my view like this, and then I can work with them in the view, of course. So in my view, I'll loop through all my orders and I want to create a new panel for each order. Therefore, I'm placing the loop outside of that panel div. So here I'll loop through all my orders as order and I'll close this loop after this panel div here and for each like that. And inside the div, I do have my unordered list here where I want to loop through multiple what? Multiple items in the cart. And the good thing is I already grouped the items in the cart because of course I don't want to print three times World of Warcraft or anything like that if I don't have it three times. So here I'll again loop through all my items in the cart and I can access the items well, on my order, then on the card object, which I deserialized, so it's a PHP object again. Therefore, I can also access the items field on my card. And if you have a look at the card model again, you might remember that we have this items field here. So with that, I'm looping through all my items as item here. And I want to close the for each loop after my list item here. And in this list item, I actually don't only want to output the text, but instead I want to give it a batch, which well tells me the overall price of this item group. So this should get the batch class. And the value will just be item price. I do have to access this like this, not with the arrow notation, because this is no field on an item object. Item is just an associative array. Therefore, I'm accessing a field in this array with the square brackets notation. And I'll place the dollar sign after that, because this will be a price in the end. Thereafter, and notice or remember, this will be floated to the right, so it will actually appear on the right, even if I enter it in front of the text here in the HTML code. So thereafter, I'm outputting the name of the item. So item, item, and then the name was stored in the title field like this. And I also want to output the quantity. I'll separate it with a pipe symbol here. You, of course, may choose whatever layout you prefer. And here I'll just output item quantity. And then I'll just add units after it. With that, the last thing I want to do is here in the footer, the panel footer should actually get a strong tag where I say, where I say total price and then output the total price, which I can access on my order, then on the cart object. And there I had this total price field, which I can access. And again, place a dollar sign. Well, actually in front of it, right? That's how we do it. So let's do the same for the individual item price. With that, I should output all my orders. And if I go back to my application, I'm already logged in. If I go to the user profile again, well, you see the orders. So let's try this again by making a new one, maybe a more complex order where I buy multiple items like this. Go to the shopping cart page, click on checkout, get this dummy credit card data again, enter some dummy data up here enter the credit card, enter expiration, and so on all the data, click on checkout. And thereafter, let's have a look at the user profile. Looks pretty good to me. With that, we got our working shopping cart application here, if we want to name it like this. And I'm very happy to see you in all the future videos. Bye.